grade 11s. In today's lesson, we will join Tabaho and his teacher as they revise the laws and definitions of thirds. Let's join them now. A third is a number written underneath a root sign. We use it in maths to accurately represent an irrational number. And are there rules for thirds like there are rules for exponents? Yes, that's right. But in this case, there are only three laws you need to remember. The first law says that if you multiply thirds with the same root, you can multiply the bases and put them under the same root. The second law says that if you have a fraction under the root sign, you can take the root of both the numerator and the denominator separately. And the last law you've already seen. If you take the root of a number, you can divide the powers. I think I can remember those. Let's try some examples. All right, but before we do that, there are a few things you need to keep in mind when dealing with thirds. Firstly, you must always manipulate thirds into their simplest form. In other words, you must write them in their prime factor form. Secondly, you can only collect like thirds. And lastly, you should never leave a third in the denominator. You must always rationalize the denominator. Now you've lost me. How do you know which are like thirds and what does it mean to rationalize? Would you say that root 18 is in its simplest form? In other words, is 18 a prime number? No, it isn't. Okay, so to simplify 18, we would need to write it as a product of its prime factors. Do you think you could do that? I think so. 18 is the same as 9 times 2. 9 is 3 squared. So that's the square root of 3 squared times 2. Almost there. What would happen if you applied the first third law? Well, we'd get the square root of 3 squared times the square root of 2. And what is the square root of 3 squared? It's 3. Ah, I see. If I apply the law, I get 3 root 2. And you'd have written root 18 in its simplest third form. Can I try another one? Here, yeah, try this one. Remember that you must always write a third in its simplest form first. 50 is 25 times 2, and 25 is 5 squared. If I apply the first law, I get the square root of 5 squared times the square root of 2, which gives me 5 root 2. Good, Debuho. Now, let's look at the next one. You can only collect like thirds. Like thirds are similar to like terms. You can add x and x to get 2x, or y squared and 2y squared. But you cannot collect x and y squared. So, similarly, you can add root 2 and root 2 to get 2 root 2. But you can't collect root 2 and root 5. It's important to remember that the law only applies when we are dealing with like thirds. But if we are multiplying the unlike thirds, we can convert them into like thirds. To do this, we use this formula. It says that if we multiply the root and the power by the same number, it doesn't change the value. We use this rule in a similar way to using the common denominators, in that we use it to get the common powers to simplify the equation through grouping terms. Here's an example for us to try. In this example, we have a third root and a fifth root. The easiest way to convert them will be to multiply 3 by 5 and 5 by 3 to get the 15th root for both of the thirds. By doing this, we have converted unlike thirds into like thirds, and now we can apply the laws and simplify. Do you think you can take it from here? The first law says that if you multiply thirds with the same root, you can multiply the bases and put them under the root sign. So let me do that. Now I can use my calculator to work that out, which gives me the 15th root of 30,375, which is irrational, so I'll leave it in the third form. Nicely done, Debuho. Let's move on to the next rule. Never leave a third in the denominator. You must always rationalize the denominator. As we said, a third is an irrational number. It's easier to work with fractions when they have a rational denominator. When we do this, we say we are rationalizing the denominator. That makes sense, but how do I do this? 
Here, I'll show you. Tell me something, Deboho. What do I get when I multiply root 2 with root 2? That will be root 2 squared, which is 2. And 2 is a rational number, while root 2 is not. So, by multiplying a third by itself, we would get a rational number. But if we did this, we would change its numerical value. We know, though, that if we multiply a number by 1, we don't change its value. And any number divided by itself equals 1. Now, if we combine these two principles, it gives us a method of rationalizing the denominator in a fraction. OK. Here, let me show you. In this example, we have root 2 in the denominator. I want to change this root 2 into a rational number, but I don't want to change the numerical value of the fraction. In other words, I need to somehow convert this fraction into an equivalent fraction with a rational denominator. I know that if I multiply a third by itself, it gives me a rational number. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by root 2 over root 2, which is 1. And as such, doesn't change the value of the existing fraction. And if I now apply the first law, it gives me root 10 divided by 2. 2 is a rational number, so I have rationalized the denominator. Hey, that's pretty clever. It is, isn't it? Mm. Would you like to give it a go? Yeah. You can start with an easier example. The denominator is root x. So I multiply the fraction by root x over root x. Then I apply the first law which gives me the square root of x squared y over x. I simplify this, I get x root y over x, and the x's cancel out, leaving me with root y. I'm impressed. Now, can we try one that's a little bit more difficult? I'll give it a try. There's a root y in the denominator. This means that I need to multiply the whole fraction by root y over root y. In the numerator, I distribute the root y into both terms to get 5x root y minus 16 root y. In the denominator, root y times root y equals y, which is a rational number. Excellent, Debuha. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Exponents and Thirds task video. You'll also be able to learn more about Exponents and Thirds on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.